Yeah, one of the fundamental things about poker, especially in home games, is that you instead of playing with cash, get some chips. Players will put chips in the pot a lot easier than they will uh, $100 bills. So it's always been my contention that you should go buy you a good set of chips, and when you play poker, especially in the home games, you can't hardly do it in uh, casinos, but if you, if you play in home games, get some chips and play with chips instead of cash because your expectations will be a lot better. And doesn't that work two ways, Doyle? Not only do the weak players give you more money by playing weaker if you're playing with chips, but you yourself can't afford to think of it as real money. You can't think, oh, I'm betting a Mercedes Benz now and I really want it or something like that, or I shouldn't call that bet or I shouldn't make this bluff because that can buy all these things. You just think of them as units when you're in a poker game. That's what all the top players do is they, don't, they lose sense of the value of money at the poker table. When you walk away from the poker table, then you remember it's real money. But when you're playing poker, uh, if you're playing a dollar and two dollar, don't make a difference if you're playing a thousand and two thousand. You know, it's just a unit. And if you can't adapt to that, you can't play poker. You know, everybody's different in the poker world. Everybody's got a different comfort level. Uh, I know the, the guys I play with, they're kind of, I, I say they're sick. I, I shouldn't say they, I should say we're sick. <laughs> because uh, we have to experience a certain amount of pain when we lose. And if we're not playing high enough yeah. to hurt when we lose, uh, don't care enough. We don't, we don't feel like we're uh, playing as high as we should. Remember, there's a psychological miracle that occurs when you play for chips. Your opponents are more likely to gamble recklessly, even foolishly, with chips than they are with cash. Cash has real value in their minds. They visualize what it can buy. Chips hide the value and make it psychologically easier for opponents to surrender their money. And here's a good tip. Against unsophisticated opponents, bet cash if you're bluffing and chips if you want to call. Remember that Mike and I have stressed all along that there are no absolutes in poker. It depends on a variety of things. But here is a general guideline on some starting hands that you should fold. Mike? Never commit any money to a pot unless profit is your motive. Of course, just setting the stage for later profit by establishing an image can occasionally be a good motive. But usually, you want the decision you make to be profitable on the current hand. Whether or not to play starting hands are the most obvious decisions that put you on a path to profit. Remember, you earn money by folding correctly. If a starting hand would be unprofitable if played, then you increase your profit by not playing it. Money saved by not playing unprofitable starting hands is money you win. So here's an example of a hold'em starting hand you shouldn't play. The player in position 7 raises to $150. These two players call. Seat number 1 re-raises to $350. And now it's up to you. You should fold this Jack-10 suited without hesitation. First of all, it's not good enough to compete because you'd usually need to make a straight or flush to win against this many opponents. There's maximum opportunity to make a straight or a flush, but it isn't enough. Remember that most speculative hands, like these high suited connectors, end up winning some other way, often by making pairs. But against all these players, your ranks just aren't high enough to compete favorably. Additionally, the re-raise puts you in greater jeopardy of being against a high hand, and the cost to play is excessive. When you do play this hand, you'd like it to be against many players, but you want to see the flop cheaply. Also bothersome is the fact that, if you call, other players might raise again or move all in, forcing you to waste that $350 without even seeing a flop. You must fold here. 
But this is exactly the sort of hand that overly optimistic players fall in love with, and as a consequence, they severely damage their bankrolls. Fold. It's nine-handed. You're in a pretty early position three seats away from the big blind. The first two players to act have folded, meaning there are still six players waiting to act, including the blinds. These are your cards. Fold without hesitation. Actually, this is a great example of where your profit comes from. Other players entering pots with this hand in this situation. It simply isn't profitable, and it's especially unprofitable in a no-limit game. The chances of running into an ace with a big kicker are too great, along with many other misfortunes that can plague these cards. Learn to fold and feel good about it. The big concept here is that you'll dominate a hold'em game only if you learn to stay out of unprofitable situations with bad starting hands. Here's just one more example. With this hand, you always want to fold in early positions, as we've discussed. Moreover, the only real value of this hand is to attack from the late positions or to defend the blinds. It is almost never a calling hand if you're not in the blinds. If someone else raises a pot, you'll usually fold unless you're in the blinds, and even then quite often. This hand gets a lot of players in a lot of trouble. As you gain sophistication, if you're on the button and the player to your right makes a call or routine small raise, you might consider leveraging your position by raising or re-raising, thus freezing out the blinds. And you can often play this in the blinds if it doesn't cost much to call. Or you can even raise the small blind with these cards if nobody else is competing and the hand might be just barely profitable if you open the pot from a middle position. But other than those exceptions, fold most of the time, especially early. The biggest mistake you can make is to call with this king-queen when someone else has raised from an early position. Be prepared to fold. I'm the mad genius of poker, Mike Carroll. And I'm Doyle Brunson. I amplify. Do you?